So now we're using the power of Excel. So on here, I'll select the blue. It's gonna populate our charts. Use the gray. That is using Excel to its advantage. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and I am Andrew Hess. So today we're gonna to start off on part two of using Excel with Power Apps and some of my ideas. We're gonna start where we left off. We're in a gallery, we have one drop down that's currently filtering our gallery. And when we select new, we can fill in our options of the Excel sheet. So an option in Excel. We can then fill this in and it will write to our table. So we can see that we have an option in Excel of type Microsoft is now in our gallery. All right, so we wanna be able to filter on multiple things. Now when we do search, my suggestion is to copy, I wouldn't say exactly copy, but learn from someone else that you know that does it better than you. And so here in America, I believe everyone knows Amazon.com. I would say at least a good portion of the population knows Amazon.com. So when we do our search bar, I believe we want to do the same thing up here. So we're going to zoom in and focus in on this. I want my search bar to look like this. So we have a drop down. It starts off as all. And then we can type in here and then we can hit the search button. So in my opinion, you know, depending on what country you're in or where you're at, find a, a website that, that does search better than you. Amazon probably had hundreds, I don't even know if thousands of people to help them decide how to do their search bar, right? They have, they have more knowledge than we do. So let's mimic what Amazon did here in our Power Apps. And for your country, find a website that everyone knows and then mimic that search because your users are used to searching like that, right? So why make them relearn a new tool that you created when you can mimic something that everyone already knows? So I'm gonna go here to Power Apps and in my dropdown, let's go to my dropdown, in my items, I have distinct product type, right? So that's pulling in each of the products that we have. Let's create a collection here. So I'm gonna to go to the on visible of this page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a collection. And it's gonna be based off the distinct product type, right? So I'm gonna pull in from the items menu of my dropdown. We did this last week. We did a distinct product type. On the on visible of my screen one, we're gonna collect uh, collection type distinct product type and then we're also going to collect all so let's see if we can do this correctly so we're going to do this and then we're going to collect collection type all let's let's see what happens i may need to fix this i'm just doing this for right now so let's go new and go back and now collected it because it's on the on visible property so in that collection and, and this is going to help you understand collections when i make mistakes right in the collection collect type, it's under result. Now result happens when uh, you do things like distinct. Distinct automatically puts things in the result column. That's just a feature of distinct. And we put it in the value column. So let's go back and fix that. So now instead of collect all, we're gonna say, we're gonna do our curly bracket result all, okay? So now, before we do all this, what we want to do is actually clear, collect. I believe that's going to work. If we clear collect first, go to new, and we'll click back again. And so it recollected. So let's check out the collection. You can see now in our collection, we have our results, the, the four different types, and then an all field. Let's re-update our dropdown, actually. We are doing distinct type here. We're gonna do collection type dot result. 
All right, so we have our options in here. And so let's arrange sort by columns collection result. The column that we want to sort by is result. And we want to do descending. Actually, we want to do ascending. All right, so now all is at the top. So we have all, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Tesla. So we're mimicking Amazon's here, all, all is first. So now in our gallery, we're filtering by that dropdown, but we're gonna do an if statement here. So we're gonna say if drop type dot selected dot result equals all, then we wanna show everything. Then we wanna show all of product else filter for us all right so now we have all and then we have our options in here right so is the i think that's the correct way to do this drop down so we do all amazon google microsoft tesla and then all shows everything now if we look at amazon the next thing they do is supply a text box so let's do that so we're going to put in a text box here. So now we're going to default it to blank. And now we want to do a search. Now I, I opened up a, a new notepad and this is just for me temporarily. What I like to do to make it simple on myself is some people that get lost if they should do search first or if they should do sort first or, or you know, what the order should be, so I'm just gonna take this out and I'm gonna put it in Notepad. All right, so since we're in Excel, we have our items in product. I, I've started clear again, we took out our equation. What we're going to do is we're going to filter product. We have to do starts with instead of the search command. We're gonna say filter product when it starts with the, uh, so what text are we going to do? Let's do, let's do, uh, color since we have our filter here color when it starts with our text search dot text and we need two parentheses all right so now let's type in red so all the red show up uh, let's type in B for black and blue so we can see that it's not filtering yet let's add in our filter now so now let's go back to our equation so we have our equation here and let's do the filter on it. So I'm just going to post it here on the left side. So we have our two equations here. We're filtering on the left side. We have our if statement and we're saying if it's all then search product. We're going to take this starts with this filter starts with and we're going to put it over top product. Okay. So now we have it working with all now when it's not equal to all, we want to also filter. So filter product type result is I'm going to say and, and starts with a color comma text search dot text. All right. So you notice that when we add the and, and we do run into delegation issues. So adding the and in there is going to give us a warning, but it is going to work. So let's say we're at all and we press B. This part is not going to run into delegation issues, but as soon as we hit Microsoft, so let's add two Microsofts in there. Let's add a black version of Microsoft phone. All right, so we're gonna do new uh, Microsoft black. Um, it will be of type Microsoft. The color will be black. And uh, yeah, we'll just add some things in there. And we'll do submit. All right, so now, we see we have our Microsoft black in there. If we go down to Microsoft and we type in B, we can see that we are filtering on there, but we do have delegation issues. You see the underlying blue here? So there, there's a few options we could do. Now, we could convert all of this to collections, right? We could turn product into a collection. And so I can show you how to do this, although it's not my recommended way. So we would go to the on screen on visible and we would for all product 
collect and we would give our collection a name so we would call it um collect um products collect product and then we're going to go through each of the items so we want so we can see my list down here um we can see the each of the columns and we're just going to rename each one title is title we're just going to take the column from excel and give it a column name in our collection. So title is title, type is type, color is color. All right, so we got our parentheses right and our squiggly brackets right. Now we've created a collection and the collection is called call product. Okay, so now in here we can do call product, call product. Now it's blank because we, we collect the collection on visible. So we'll go back and now we have our collection. So we just recollected on the on visible. And if we go to our, our search, you can see the and and delegation is now gone, right? So the delegation issue is gone because we pulled it into a collection. All right. So we did all that great work in power apps. I understand. Um, in my opinion, power apps is more for entering data, writing to databases. If we want to query the data, why are we not using Excel? We have all that knowledge here. Let's just use Excel. So we can do insert, or actually, let's see, I think if we do data or insert, pivot table, right? So pivot table, we're gonna create our own pivot table on a new sheet. We have our new pivot table. We want title, co uh, type, color, completed, each one of these. And then we just want to form the pivot table without all these totals in here. So I believe if we right click, and this depends on what version of Excel you have, but I am in the newest updated version. So we want to right click, don't show subtotal on each one of these. Don't show subtotal. And finally here, don't show subtotal. So we now have a table that looks very similar to our other table. And we probably don't wanna show a grand total either. Maybe you do, maybe you want a grand total. But for now, we're not gonna show a grand total. And I'm gonna insert a new column here just to give us some more space. Now, what you would do is you would hide the table from your users. So I would just come down here and do hide. And so we would hide our table from the users. Now, if you notice, um, all my options are here, but let's, let's write a new option and, and check out what happens. So let's do new, um, new can't see yet. Okay. So the title is new can't see yet. It's going to be Amazon, um, etc. gray and we'll submit. So it does appear here in Power Apps, right? It does appear in Power Apps, but let's go back to Excel. Now you notice that it's not here yet. What you have to do is you have to refresh. So if you go to data and you refresh all connections, it will then appear. So what I would suggest is you give people view access to this, um, Excel sheet. Uh, you can refresh all connections and the data will be there. Now, the next thing what you want to do is you want to come to pivot table and insert slicers. So you can insert slicer on title. Oh, that's probably not a good one. Let's insert on pivot table, insert a slicer on type. So there's no reason to do all this work in Power Apps. I know I created this big long Power Apps about how to do this. But why don't you just use the power of Excel? You, you know, you're using Excel as the data source. It's time to use the power of Excel now. So my suggestion is to actually not do all this greatness in Power Apps. We did learn how to do it. Um, you know, you could probably just keep this basic uh, part in, in, um, in Power Apps if you wanted. 
Uh, but my suggestion, when you want to search your Excel table, maybe just give them access to the Excel table and let them search here. You know, it's going to be much faster. It, you can handle a lot more data. There's going to be no delegation issues. Um, there's some neat things we can do here. We can insert other pivot tables, right? So we can insert a pivot table from range. And we'll choose um, counts of completed on a new sheet. Right, it's on a new sheet. So now we want to do a pie chart. So we can cut this, put it next to our other table. Right, so we ha now have our totals for how many are complete and how many are not complete. And so I would do the same thing all the way down. So we're back on our sheet one, insert a pivot table. Um, we can do things by, um, let's see if we, we choose a few more. Um, count by group by and completed. You know, we could do, uh, enter that on a new sheet and change this into a, um, a column chart. Paste it in. We now have uh, more charts here, so let's uh, make this one a little bit bigger. And of course we can change the colors and everything, but why not use the power of Excel instead of trying to do everything in Power Apps, just because you have Power Apps doesn't mean you should be using Power Apps. So we can go back to Power Apps and let's create a new item. Um, let's say this is the Google Pixel and it's of type Google and it's going to be yellow this time Product B, it's completed, and we'll just submit. So we'll come back to our product list and just do data, um, refresh all. And so now we have our Google Pixel in there. And, you know, it's going to fill in the other charts too. So if we came in here and we formatted this and we put in our, our data labels, let's say um, our values, I think, our values, we can see here that it's 10 and two. Let's just prove that this is working. We're gonna do another one that's false. So we'll create new. Um, this will be the Amazon Phone X, I don't know. Um, and it's gonna not be completed, we'll submit. We'll do data, refresh all. And there it is, it's now added our Amazon Phone X in there. And you can see the total here is now three and 10. So it's updating our charts too. So you can build, um, you know, different times that your refresh um, works on. You can have it so it refreshes every time you open the Excel sheet. Um, there's more things you can do. So my advice is if you're gonna use Excel as a backend, use the strengths of Excel, right? Uh, everyone doesn't like Excel. There are lots of limitations to using Excel, but if you're gonna use Excel as your backend, you know, pick up on the strengths of Excel, use the pivot tables, use the slicers, use the graphs, you know, allow people to, you know, manipulate the data right here. You could even, I'm pretty sure we could even connect these slicers to our pie charts. So if we do show settings, I believe we can even connect the slicers to our pie charts. Check that out. Now that is using the power of Excel. So, so then I just connect this slicer also. So if I go to the settings here and, and let me move my face since it's in the way. If I uh, select, you know, pivot table two and three, make sure I did that right. So now we're using the power of Excel. So on here, I'll select the blue. It's going to populate our charts, use the gray that is using Excel to its advantage. And you can even have multiple slicers at once. So my suggestion, if you're gonna use Excel, use the strengths of Excel since it's your backend. Use your slicers, use your pivot tables, and use Power Apps for what it's supposed to be, and that is submitting data. It's, to me, Power Apps is just a really fancy form. So use Power Apps for the form, and use your data manipulation, your data querying in Excel. So thank you all for watching. Uh, I may be gone for a week or so. I'm gonna be going to the Power Platform Conference, so I'm gonna try and bring all that knowledge back to you. I'm gonna take you, tell you what I learned. I'm gonna you know, put in a nice little neat package for you, and we will talk in a couple weeks or so. 
So thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.